Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 12 the short exercises. Note accounting is about understanding the concepts and applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However if you don't understand the concepts that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone instructor can help with that understanding. And I'm not going to go through the same long spiel that I did for the previous video um, on exercise 12, short exercise 12-7. Um, you can watch that four or five minute rant, all right? But I will say that um, you know if you're not understanding, I'm not going through the theory again. If you're not understanding the theory, go uh, go back to the math for business and finance, or go look at the end of each chapter that pertains to that particular ratio, um, and reread that the focus on decision making section there, and watch the theory videos for that particular chapter. Okay. All right. So uh, 12-8. We have return on sales, return on assets, return on common equity, times interest earned ratio, and the debt ratio. So 2014 financial statements showed assets of 572, liabilities of 3322, net sales of 1,276,000, net income of 191, income from operations 227, cost of goods sold 743, dividends of 24 interest expense of 18. Total assets and liabilities for 2013 were total assets and liabilities for 2013 were 513 and 314 respectively. Compute the ratios for 2014. Right? Round all answers to two decimal places. Right? So again, in working word problems, remember you have information that's directly related to solving the problem information that has nothing to do with solving the problem and information that has to be manipulated all right so get my pen here all right so for the debt ratio all right we know the debt ratio is uh, so the debt ratio is total liabilities over my total assets so what are my total liabilities um, see here for 2014 my total assets are 572 and my total liabilities are 322.5 so if I have um, five uh, 300 I'm sorry raise that if I have 322.5 and I'm dividing that by 572,000 I end up with 0.56 or 56 percent so that's my debt ratio is 56 percent that's simple right again the formulas for these are in the in the textbook all right look them up all right um, you don't need to so much memorize them all right but you do have to understand what they are and so interest coverage ratio all right, so the interest coverage ratio is equal to um, the earnings before interest and taxes over interest expense. All right, so what's my interest, uh, my earnings before interest and taxes? So let's see here. What do I have here? I have uh, a net income. Net income is my earnings, and um, that's before the interest and tax. Notice, income from operations is not the same thing. Okay, my net income is my uh, income less my expenses. All right, so that's why I'm using 191,400 right, over my interest expense. Oops. I'm sorry, got that wrong. Um, no, it is the income from the operations, right? 
my net income comes after my interest in taxes. All right, so I have 227,600, and that is divided by my interest expense here of 187. And that gives me uh, 12.17 times. Okay, so that's my interest uh, my interest coverage ratio. Right. So let me go back over that again because I got a little mixed up. All right, and looking at the data. All right, so I have net income of 191,400. Net income is the bottom line income. My income from operations is 227,600. So remember, revenues less expenses gives me a profit or loss. That's what the that's what this 227,600 is. And then you have um, you take out your interest and your taxes to get your net income, right? Which ends up being 191,4. All right. So that's the framework. So that's why we're using the 227. 600 as uh, the earnings before interest and taxes and then of course it tells you that your interest expense is 18.7 okay so pause the video i'm going to erase this okay so my return on assets Return on assets. Uh, return on assets is equal to my net income over my average total assets. So my, uh, as I just explained, my net income is 191.4. And the average total assets, so what do I have here? So I'm showing, um, for 2014, I'm showing total assets of 572, right? But we need the average total assets. So it's the beginning of the year um, plus the end of the year divided by 2. So for 2013, which has the ending balance of 513, that becomes our beginning balance for 2014. So I have 572,000 plus the 513,000, and that's all divided by two. Okay. So I have 191.4, and that's over. Let's see, 572 plus 513. That's a million. Um, one zero eight five zero 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 divided by two. Okay, so that is equal to one ninety one four hundred over. If I take a million eighty five thousand and divide that by two, I end up with five hundred and forty two thousand five hundred. And when I divide one by the other. I end up with uh, 35 percent. Okay. All right. So pause the video there. I'm going to erase. Notice that there is, you know, the math is the math. That's the easy part. The thinking part is, uh, first of all. Um, okay, here's my ratio. Well, what is you know what is the formula for my ratio? Like in this case here, dividend payout is equal to dividends over my net income, right? So once I know the uh, the formula, and you can look that up in the book, then it's a matter of working through the word problem and figuring out what. Uh, is directly related, what has nothing to do with the problem, and what has to be manipulated in order to solve for that particular ratio. So in this case here, um, I need my dividends, which it's telling me 24,600, and that's over my net income of 
191, 400. Divide one by the other, and I get 13%. Okay, pause the video. I'm erasing that. And lastly, my return on equity is my net income, and that's over my average stockholder equity. Okay, so my net income is 191.4, and my average stockholder's equity. Again, average, meaning I'm going to add two numbers together and divide by two. So let's see, my average stockholder equity, da, 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 da. assets, liabilities, net sales, net income, net income, cost of goods sold, dividends, interest expense, assets and liabilities. Okay, so um, I am going to, so I have total assets and total liabilities. So if, uh, notice, Notice what I'm doing here, okay? You know, this this there is another prime example of you have to, you know, use everything that you know, okay? Because you have to, you have to know the entire concept and know how all the moving pieces fit together. If you're reading this, you notice it doesn't say anything about stockholders' equity. Okay, so if you're you're looking at this problem, going well, you're if you're just trying to copy numbers out of the book, you know, you're going to get stuck because in here it does not say anything about stockholders' equity. Okay, but what is stockholders' equity? Well, the basic accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. And if we manipulate that formula, we have assets minus liabilities, which equals our equity. Ah, so if I have if I have assets of 572 and liabilities of 322.5, I can figure out my equity. Okay, and we have the same thing going on for 2013. All right, so the end of 2013 becomes the beginning figures for 2014, and this is where all the manipulation comes in. All right. Notice how I'm taking the data that I have and I'm thinking about the concepts and I'm applying that information in order to manipulate the data in order to come up with what I need. All right. So if I have 513,000 um, less my 314.5, that will give me 513 minus 314.5, that gives me um, 198,500. That's my beginning, right? That's the end of 2013, which becomes my beginning of 2014. Now for 2014, I have assets of 572 and liabilities of 322.5 which gives me 572 minus 322.5, which gives me uh, 249,500. So that's my ending. Okay. Now, I'm going to change the colors here. So I have 198,500 plus the 249,500 and that's all divided by two. Okay, so that's my average stockholder's equity. Okay, and now um, going, when I do the math, I have 191.4, and if I take 198,500 plus 249,500, that gives me 400. And 48,000, and I'm dividing that by 2, okay, so I'm going to move that, take and do the math up here, so now I have 191.4, and if I take 448 divided by 2, that gives me 224,000, 
And then if I divide 191,400, divide it by 224,000, I end up with 85%. Okay, so that is uh, my return on my equity. Okay, 85%. Right, so uh, pause the video, um, you know, stop, replay, go back and, you know, replay the video if you didn't get this. I mean, I'm just going to uh, run over it relatively quickly, okay, because I just got done working through the whole problem, right? But as you can see, if you just look at the screen, it's kind of like scattered all over everything. So let me just reiterate here. So I'm being asked for my return on equity, right? And so this is the formula for return on equity, net income over average stockholders equity and notice it's an average okay so the net income was easy to find right we have our net income of 191.4 okay that was easy to get but if you look in here you don't see anything for stockholders equity all right there's no direct number so that means we're going to have to figure out what our stockholders equity is well we have our ending figures for 2013 are 513 and 314, right? And why are we using that? Because the accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus equity, right? If we know our assets, if we know two out of three, we can figure out the third. So if we know our assets, we know our liabilities, now we're able to figure out our, our equity. You know, so it's assets minus liabilities equals our equity. So if I take the 213, and the 314 and subtract one from the other I end up with my beginning number for 2014 right of 198.5 then I go over here and I have to do the same thing with my 2014 figures where I take the 572 less the 322 and I get an ending number of 249,500 okay so if I have a beginning plus my ending, beginning plus my ending, divide it by two, right? Beginning plus ending, divide it by two, that's how we get the average. That's what we're doing right here. We're taking the 198,500 plus the 249,500, dividing it by two. And when we do all of that math, right, we end up with 224,000. So we divide it into the net income of 191,400. Uh, 191,400 and we got our answer of 85,000. All right, so um, that's it for this exercise. It was a good exercise um, to remind you that, you know, you have to manipulate data. You have to understand the concepts, you know, um, and even though the information isn't there, if you, uh, you know, if you're just going to briefly read over everything and do some homework problems trying to pick numbers out of the book without thinking, and you're going to go back into the book and try and just, you know, pick numbers, then you're going to get the answers wrong. You have to, you know, think through the concepts, understand them, and apply that understanding to the situation at hand to come up with your answers. All right. So with that said, I will see you in the next video for the next exercise.